In the farming and research sectors, Australians are finding that drones are quickly showing their worth in an otherwise time and labour intensive industry. CASA introduced drone regulation uh, in 2002, back in 2002, and it really made Australia one of the first countries where drone operators could conduct uh, activities commercially. It is giving wildlife researchers and conservation workers and governments um, some a tool that can be used in a way that has never been possible before. We introduced after that uh, a category called excluded category. That category also allows people who own their own land um, and want to use drones in that setting, for example, in an agricultural setting, to fly drones that weigh up to 25 kilograms for certain low risk activities without needing to have a full remote pilot license. Australian drone companies are using drones outfitted with detection sensors and spray equipment to target invasive weeds, reducing cost and the use of chemicals. So we're seeing a lot of use um, with the spray drones. You know, that is an area that has really exploded in the last, you know, I guess particularly 12 months. But, you know, even looking back um, two or three years, you know, it, it's, it's a really, really growing space. A drone can be outfitted with just about any type of sensor. This can provide the users with data ranging from simple tree count in an orchard to topographical maps and even to animal tracking for wildlife research and conservation purposes. So we've developed a unique uh, payload technology that can be attached to a drone and it listens for the signals from animal tags. So whether that's an endangered species or an invasive species, um, our drone payload can listen for those signals, find which direction they're coming from and then locate the animal all without getting close to the animal or just their behaviour. With Australia's wide and varied landscape, it can be almost impossible to reach some places by foot or vehicle. This is where drones can provide a safe and efficient way to navigate an otherwise unreachable location. For example, in mountainous landscapes where there is just no access on the ground or wetlands and swamps where people just find it very, very difficult to get access into those areas. With the drone, they can get in there, they can track more animals simultaneously and, than ever before, and they can do it um, more often and with less effort. Drones are quickly becoming a useful tool of the trade to help improve crop yield, control cattle and support asset management. Some of the key advantages would be cost. You know, it's obviously a lot cheaper to charge a battery than it is to put fuel into a chopper, as well as you know, time. So a lot of things in agriculture are very time oriented. So if you need to have something done, it needs to kind of be done now and you don't want to be waiting for someone to show up to do the job. So um, you know, a lot of people are using drones for that in that mustering space because you know they can just pull it out of the back of their ute, put it in the air, and get the job done. Highly automated drones can be programmed to collect agricultural data at specific times and send the data wirelessly to certain systems, such as an irrigation system, and correct an existing issue without the need for human interaction. Our long-term vision for our business is to have autonomous, fully autonomous systems where you have docking stations, the drone can launch and land, it can be pre-programmed to go out and collect different types of data in different days or different times of different days thermal imaging, um, RGB imagery, radio tracking, and then embedding AI, edge AI as well, uh, picking up data from sensors. There's a plethora of things that all of a sudden become possible if you're able to build in the autonomy into the solution. With any emerging technology, it's important to consider the community acceptance and understanding, and that's no different with agricultural drones. People probably don't understand just how easy the drones are to fly. Uh, you know, they kind of look at the technology and think, oh my goodness, I'm just going to crash this thing. Until they can see a drone in action, be shown how easy it is for it to fly, then, you know, they, they don't have that understanding. And so, you know, once you can show them that, reassure them of the process, uh, then, you know, once you get past that barrier, then there's a lot more acceptance. As we move to a more sustainable, efficient and technologically advanced future, CASA will continue to work with industry to make sure that our skies remain safe, while providing a clear path forward for the use of these technologies. Find out more on our website.